This is the City Newsroom. My name is Bob Yose. Now, life in Ghana and other parts of the world comes to a standstill without the regular supply of uninterrupted power, electricity. The current government has on many occasions, including the recent State of the Nation address, claim that it has resolved the issue with Dumso. But as you and I know, many communities, businesses, as well as corner shops have been complaining in recent days that they are experiencing hours on the end of uh, irregular power supply. Now, according to the government, this is as a result of a, a cleanup exercise of the West Africa gas pipeline, which supplies power from Nigeria to Benin, Togo and Ghana. According to government, in order to ensure that the ongoing exercise, which they call pigging, does not affect Ghanaians, they had put in place some measures, some plans. For example, uh, the Pontemo plans, the Tico plans, as well as the Sen power plans, were all part of a grand scheme to ensure that Ghanaians did not suffer. But generators and turbines have had issues, technical issues, which has led to a lot of communities in Accra, Kumasi, and beyond experiencing power outages. Now, this has been made evident on social media as a lot of Ghanaians are saying that Dumso is back. They're calling for a timetable. In today's edition of the City Newsroom, we're currently by the N1, the La Paz uh, Malam Road, at the edge of the community known as Aquitiman. Around 12.30 uh, p.m. thereabouts, now this community was without power and they had, had not had power uh, going back to about 15 hours that's the 25th of uh, uh, february in the evening to 26th of february they've not had power sometimes the power comes and it goes so we are here to speak to businesses some corner shops some individuals who rely on power to go about their business to find out how this situation is affecting them my name is bobby Ose, and you're watching the city newsroom so the Aquitiman uh, community located within the Okanque North constituency of the La Paz uh, Malam N1 uh, highway I mean you find a lot of small corner shops people selling you know drinks uh, some tailors here and there some hairdressers like any other community within you know the uh, an, an urban center now I've seen this particular business um, and it appears that they are doing some uh, type of baking I'm gonna try and speak to uh, one of them senior how is that nice nice, nice. Uh, what, what exactly do you guys do here uh, we, we are doing bakery here okay, it's I a bakery see. factory Okay, just bread or you do cakes and things? No, like only bread. Uh, bread, tea, yeah. bread, brown bread. Tea, bread, brown bread, wheat bread, butter bread. Okay. okay. But if, if you order for any of the kind of the bread, we'll do it for you. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. nice. No, 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 no problem. So um, we, we, are, we realize that uh, you guys are having some sort of uh, light, you know, light off. Tell me about it and tell me about it and how it's, it's affecting work. Oh, this light off is, if I, if I say, I'll talk much about it, like... We won't live here. Since yesterday morning, it went off. Around what time? Uh, around 9, 30, 10. Mm. So we, we, we use our hand to even mold our breasts and a lot. So mm. we, it came around 11 to 12 that way. So yes, morning? Yes, in the morning. So yesterday evening, we finished everything like this done around 12 to 1. It went off again. We use uh, a lot of machines here and all the machines that we use, Almost all of them uses hot electricity. So, what, what, what type of machines are we talking about? We have Mbin investment machine. This is the electronic oven, okay. and it uses almost half of the light here. Okay. And we have rolling machine, mm -hmm. and okay. we have one inside here. Okay. That one to use hot uh, motor and the uh, what do you call it divider. Okay. They are also inside. So almost all the machines here uses electricity. Wow. So you are, you are heavily dependent on electricity. Yes, we we, we heavily depend on that mm. because it has been helping us a lot. We came here around 3 a.m. dawn, okay. and now that, that we are cool. yes, so we couldn't do all that that we we're supposed to do early in the morning. Mm. So that we went to Nibor Town. That place too, they are not using like. We went to Nibor Town to do what? Yes. We we went there to mix our breads and all sort of things. Oh, because they had light. Yes. No, the place too, they, they don't have light, but they they have a uh, generator that's raised. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh, so, and it cost us a lot because if we were using our own light and everything, the cost was small. We went there one bag. I think they collected thirty cities for one bag. Wow. So. It costs us a lot. It's, it's affecting us. Wow, wow. So, I mean, if you, if you, if you look at uh, how much you've, you know, spent, 
I mean, since morning, uh, going all the way to Niboy Town to actually do your work, how, how much do you think you, you, you would have lost? Well, this morning, we spent almost about, let's say, 180 cities okay. just this morning. Because I think we went and bought light yesterday. Yes. That was 100 cities. 100 cities can take us within one week or one to two weeks. Okay. But today we spent almost 180 cities. Mm. So it, for fuel and then for paying for yes for fuel and for paying for the service that we went and did there so it okay. it is really affecting us it mm. it has affected us a lot so um uh, there you have it i mean he's basically painted the picture of how the intermittent uh, power supply and regular power supply is actually you know affecting businesses still try and speak to some more uh, small corner businesses around here as well as possibly some uh, residents in this particular part of accra are man to be able to find out the extent to which their lives have been affected due to the ongoing uh, uh, power you know, uh, issues. My name is Bobby Osei and you're watching The City Newsroom. The recent, you know, power outages that have, been, that have, you know, been occurring in some communities across the country are not only affecting businesses, but also ordinary citizens. Now, I have here with me some residents of Aquitiman. We've spoken to some businesses. We also want to try and see, you know, the ordinary uh, individuals who actually live here to find out how, what they make of the, the outages and uh, uh, what they think the way forward should be. I'm in the because I be a me won't call I'm sorry how much and I'm yeah be any more my show woman called school. Me sorry how much and light in a do misano. We get a touch light kit to be a media year beyond the any idea more warm. And team or more uniform crime see my yet light and to so uh if you say a light in a cough. Me need be be a mayor may I am the better some more. And see what mission is I know the coin and I feel some side headdresser. May ban no pay you so no. Alright, so uh, there you have it. Uh, the lights should be fixed so that uh, they will feel happy and life will go on. Uh, these are residents within Aquitiman uh, right here in Accra. But what's the situation in other regions across the country? My name is Bobi Osei. You're watching the City Newsroom. For now, let's cross over to other regions where our correspondent will bring us the situation on the ground and up in those parts of the country. Residents of Gumwanyanyano and Kasoa in the central region particularly those engaged in commercial activities, are of the belief that the dreaded power crisis the country experienced some years ago, Christian Dumso has returned. Some business operators who spoke to City News say the situation is creating a lot of inconvenience for their operations. They are thus demanding a load shedding timetable to plan their day and activities. They also want government to come clean on the country's power situation. Matter of fact, the Dumso has come back again and it's a situation which is i mean disturbing uh, because uh currently i can say for a week now i've been experiencing them so in my area and a uh, lot of my electrical gadgets has now been destroyed by the uh, doom so so i would use this opportunity to appeal to the electricity company of ghana and the government as a whole especially the energy sector to, I mean, come out with a, uh, a timetable if the doomsaw has come back again. Uh, in the morning, I have been experiencing this doomsaw for the past two weeks in my area. Uh, I stay in Millennium City, and even yesterday there was power outage from say, 7 p.m. up to 11 p.m. And as we all know that uh, the, the weather too is very hot. As I speak with you, so when the light goes off like that, I mean it is so hurting over the my as I talk with, with you right now, my son, my two-year-old son, uh, is having this kind of heat rashes all the all over the body because of this power as that has started recently. For the past few days in Ashanti region, some electricity consumers have been complaining about intermittent power supply in some areas. Business operators appear to be the most affected. One particular group that has been negatively affected as coastal operators. According to Elizabeth Ansa, she is forced to reduce prices anytime there is power cut for a long period of time. She told City News her fishes are going bad as a result of Tuesday night's power outage. Other coastal operators who are facing similar challenges want authorities to take urgent steps to rectify the anomaly. 
we use the electricity to do everything in our business. So we want him to help us in that aspect. When the light go off, it affects our business. At times, when the fridge come in fresher, it costs us 100 cities and above. But when the light goes off, we cannot sell it in 100 cities. At least, we must sell it 50, 40, coming down. And that one too, it will affect us. Other users of electricity are also demanding answers for the latest power cuts. Currently, I can see the government doesn't think about the youth, or doesn't think about the citizens of this country. We watch other countries when every business operates by electricity. The same as Ghana here, we operate every business with electricity. And they can give a light off without informing the people who pay the bills and always giving us light off when they want it. I think it's very, very bad. Because I realize the chief doesn't pay, the chief doesn't go to off, the government does not go off. What are the citizens? We are paying our bills. We are, having, we are suffering to make life on our own. We pay our dues, we pay everything, but yet we don't have what we want. So the crippling impact of the recent power outages on households, small corner businesses as well as individuals uh, cannot be underestimated. Now, some individuals, including the minority, are calling for a timetable because they believe that Doomsaw is back. But is that really the case? The Ministry of Energy has denied this. And so we are trying to get the opinion of the experts within the energy sector to uh, be able to get some uh, direction as to the way forward on this particular matter. I have uh, here with me a uh, research and policy analyst with the, the Institute of Energy uh, Security, Raymond Nuwak. Well, I hope I got any right. Yes, please. Yeah. All right, so now you've, uh, you've had the, the various arguments and the complaints with regards to the uh, recent power outages and uh, its impact on, on Ghanaians. Some say Dumso is back. What really is the situation from your perspective? One reason that can be attributed to this issue is um, poor, poor planning. And another one has to do with liquidity. Why do I say liquidity? Though there is um, limited supply of gas to the thermal enclave, most of our thermal plants are dual fuel. When I say dual fuel, meaning apart from gas, they can use light crude, exactly, or diesel. So therefore, if there is no gas, for them, or they, they are cleaning the pipelines, they are doing the uh, integrity check, etc. Then they must be able to supply them with diesel or the light crude, like you are seeing. And if they are unable to do that, the immediate reason will be the lack of liquidity, liquidity issues. And we already know the huge depth in the energy, uh, the electricity sector already. And the reason, another second reason, when I s said. Uh, Poor proper planning is an issue have known because they, have, they told us they have been planning for long about this particular uh, plan maintenance. It's something they know before the year ends and it will be happening uh, in January to March. So they should have put proper measures in place, knowing very well that um, our hydro uh, power plants are not the Bong, the Bui, and the Akonsobo, they don't have that generation capacity to um, so supplement when there is uh, gas off the thermal enclave. It's, if, if possible, the consumers, um, the business owners would like to know when they are going to go off, when they are going to come on, so that they'll be able to plan their activities. Yeah, I think it should be done. They, are be paying, they pay for power, so they're getting a plan, a shadow for which should not be a big deal. Well, we've heard from the experts. Let's uh, cross over and uh, listen to the former Deputy um, Energy Minister, John Jinapo, who is demanding that a timetable be put out as soon as possible. In fact, in the whole month of February, we have been witnessing load shed. And yesterday and today, the Deputy Minister of Energy, Uruguay, do confirmed that they are shedding over 200 megawatts. He is not also certain as to when the load shed will be over. He is looking at somewhere in March. And we are making it clear that to the extent that you're going to shed load up to March, it means that customers and consumers ought to be told when their lives will be turned off. We are not talking of regular maintenance. We are talking of a situation where we do not have fuel as a country because VRA has not been able to procure light crude oil. There is shortage of fuel to power our thermal plant. And so what we are saying is that because there's load shedding, 
it's only proper, it's only fair that customers and consumers are made known in advance when their power will be off so they can plan their lives. So, um, the former Deputy um, Minister for Energy, John Jinapur, they're insisting that we do need some level of transparency as well as a timetable. I'm joining the uh, Deputy Minister for Energy in charge of power. Honourable, should we expect the timetable in time soon? Um, uh, thank you very much. I, I think it's a bit unrealistic. And anybody who, knowing the current, who really understand the current happenings with the um, power system, who comes along to say that we should provide a timetable um, respectfully, doesn't really understand what is happening right now. What is happening is not your classic um, case of um, Dumso, where one knows say for the foreseeable future, say the next month or so, I am limited by the amount of energy that can be generated. For example, say you are doing maximum 600 when you know the system requires, say, 1,000. Then you know that for the next foreseeable future, uh, that is going to be this, the case. There's going to be a deficit. When you know that, then you, it is incumbent on the planners to let people know that going forward for the next six months or three months, this is what is going to happen. Then a question of timetable becomes feasible. But the circumstances under which we are right now, it is totally, totally different. So, so today being the 26th, when should we see uh, a full complement of gas from uh, the, the pipeline? Yes, like I said, um, we finished the picking exercise well ahead of time. I think three weeks earlier than expected. We finished that. The ENI is doing the work at Tema. They've increasing the cap they are increasing the capacity of gas to the Tema enclave. That one is also complete. They, f yeah, they, finish the, they will finish the, the analysis of the, um, the, data. the data that they got from the pig mm -hmm. that emerged from um, the, the, the pipeline. And then once they, they start the testing in um, Tema, which will be take about two days from tomorrow, um, then um, we will begin to see our way clear. But in the meantime, whilst the project work is going on, um, we are doing our best to um, fix the machines that have let us down. So I will plead with um, Ghanaians to bear with us. Um, it's a challenging times. Bear with us um, and we will fix this. These Ghanaians, as you are you're saying, should endure, I mean, with some possible power outages yes, I mean that is something that we apologize for and then we hope that they bear with us we will solve it it's not um, rocket science we will solve it right, so you had uh, the uh, deputy minister for energy honorable Riku Edo essentially saying that uh, there is no need for a time table we do have uh, what I mean could like crude oil for some of the plants and uh, that it's only as a result of some technical issues but in the next couple of days before the end of the first week of March all things should be restored to normal and then we should enjoy uninterrupted power supply to go about our activities still watching the city newsroom